I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at Emery Down. There's a little place just to the west of Lyndhurst in the New Forest and we're going to be doing a roughly four mile, well I say circular, more of a flat circular walk today. Initially starting off at Swan Green and then following a, an old ancient track called Cut Walk. I'll tell you a bit about that later on. And then back through some glorious woodland to Emery Down itself where we'll have a little bit of an explore around the village. So it's a beautiful spring morning. The sun is out. It's a, it's a little chilly first thing but it's beginning to warm up now. So it should be perfect conditions for a walk. So do join us. Well I've parked my car at the Forestry Commission car park at Swan Green which is just to the east of the village. Swan Green itself is a, a lovely area that's overlooked by thatch cottages and it's one of the most photographed locations in the New Forest. And it's, so it is a lovely green and uh, way back in 1880 uh, a cricket pitch was set up here by Lord Lonsborough of nearby uh, Northerwood House. I'm not sure if cricket is still played here though, I can't see a, a wicket set out on the grass there or I did come across a, a recent uh, looking photograph of cricket being played so maybe it is. But there's a lovely detached cottage opposite the green, built in 1833 to house a chap called James Young who was the newly appointed gardener at uh, the Northerwood estate, originally called Northerwood Cottage but uh, now called Beehive Cottage and I see there's even a, a beehive in the front garden there and then adjacent uh, to that there's a row of um, thatched cottages which are much older than Beehive Cottage and those once housed the forestry workers and then just to the uh, right of that is the Swan Inn which dates uh, from the 18th century. It used to be called the Swan Ale House, look at a very old map. And I think the 1914 map calls it the White Swan. But the pub was all but destroyed in a fire in 2006 and uh, it had to be almost completely rebuilt and reopened in 2008 as the Swan. And there's actually a commemorative bench to the firefighters who put out the fire. Anyway let's uh, let's kick off with the walk. You can probably hear the busy A35 just uh, by me on the right. Two little bits of information about this walk. Number one, it's one that you really possibly ought to avoid doing in the winter because it can get quite muddy in parts. So I'll, I'll show you where along the route. The second tricky bit is to find the start. Well, I've just made my way to the uh, corner of the uh, green just to have one more look. It really is quite uh, quite pretty in the, the morning sunshine and quite historic. Uh, from the 1840s there used to be pony sales and a fair held here each year and eventually the pony sales moved to the yard of the pub over the road and then onto uh, I think it was the Lindhurst racecourse ground but after the Second World War, they moved to the present uh, Bewley Road sales yard. Okay, so to find the start, <laughs> this is obviously Swan Green, and uh, so apologies for the noise of the road because we're right by it. Uh, make your way down into the bottom corner, and what we're looking for is a, an obvious gap and a path that heads uphill and uh, what we're looking for is a little cross track to get our bearings. So this is this little track that's heading uphill. Once we're on the, the cut walk it'll be obvious because it's a dead straight track but as I said the start is the, the tricky bit because there's no finger post or footpath sign. As you can see well it's nice and bone dry now but uh, in the winter it can get a little bit muddy coming up here and then this is taking us through this lovely little woodland. We're basically making our way up the side of Lindhurst Hill and then this is the path still carrying on upwards and I think this actually is 
the original start of Cut Walk, but what we're looking for is a cross track. Uh, I think it's here. Yeah, just about to make it on the brow of the hill. And then where this tree has fallen over, the track or cut walk becomes much more obvious. So here's the cross track just to get your, your bearings and then uh, I think it makes its way all the way down to the A35 down there. Now, <laughs> it, uh, it, it can confuse, well it confused me when I was doing the research for this. On a, a very old map cut walk is clearly shown and this little cross track is shown as well but on a current ordnance survey map uh, the top half of this um, little track shows but the bottom half doesn't exist at all and uh, the other bizarre thing um, a website that I look at a lot uh, the New Forest National Park Authority have a, a site a map that you can zoom in and it, it is great it shows every single path stream spring whatever you want to know in the forest they do show this path coming across but again bizarrely they actually call this bottom bit cut walk which it clearly isn't and they also show it as curving we'll just turn around curving here onto cut walk which it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, we're at the proper start and as soon as we get onto the brow of the hill it'll become much more obvious. Well now we've made our way to Cut Walk, let me tell you a little bit about the, the history of the, the track itself. It was established uh, and built in 1725 by uh, Charles III Duke of Bolton who was uh, Lord Warden of the New Forest at the time. As far as I can see, he just wanted to make sure he had a, a dry track from his home in Burley to, to Lyndhurst. So this track, well, it's supposed to uh, avoid all the, the damp areas and does try to keep to high uh, land for most of the way. So let's kick on. <laughs> quite peaceful in here. Now we're away from the A35. Birds twittering away, the odd woodpecker in the background. Still a bit early in the year for the uh, deciduous trees to be out in leaf of course but uh, still a uh, still fair bit of holly actually in these uh, these woods. You can see either side of the track the odd bit of marshland so uh, I can understand why the Duke wanted to make sure he had a nice dry track to get uh, to get about him. Well I think I mentioned at the start this is a, a route to avoid very much in the winter. This can get incredibly muddy but it's it's actually quite dry now and uh, quite a pleasant walk to to go through I'm definitely going to have to have a word with health and safety with that little bridge. <laughs> right, 
Okay, so now make sure the sun's not in uh, the lens. We're going to make a little detour off cut walk. Um, there's something I just want to show you right by here. We're on the edge of a little settlement called Alum Green. Um, there's a big house here, and I must admit, I don't know too much about it, but uh, something on the far side that's quite interesting. Well, I've just been having a conversation with a lovely lady who lives here at Alum Green, telling me a little bit about the history of it. So I just pan round, show you the impressive sort of white building with timber frame at the top. It's actually uh, three um, residences now, and she lives in one of them. And uh, just panning round Alan Green Farm. Look at those terrific dragons at the top. Magnificent. But this property here um, was lived in by uh, Lady Vera Britton, who um, wrote Testament of Youth. I think she um, bought this property on the proceeds of it. And uh, of course her daughter was um, Shirley Williams, the uh, MP that has only recently died. So um, she would have lived in uh, that house at one stage. But the thing I wanted to have a look at was just round here, up on a bank. There's a bench, a commemorative bench. So let's go and have a look at that and I'll tell you a bit more of the story of that. Here's the bench that I want to have a look at and it, it um, well it commemorates uh, an incident that took place of the night of the 5th and 6th of September 1940 when there was a bombing raid by the Germans and it resulted in the death of four British soldiers in the Royal Army Ordnance Corps and 14 others were injured and the precise location of the strike was actually on Alan Green House itself and say so this bench was put here in 1980. Okie doke, we are now going to um, sort of head back and rejoin Cut Walk. I know at the start I said that this was a circular route, a sort of flat circle. We're on the edge, or the probably the most south western part of the route. <laughs> um, but we're going to go a little bit further on, a sort of sticky out bit part of the route. I want to show you a bridge, but and then we'll be coming back along this path here. So let me just show you. That's where we're the heading for, and then this is where we then come back and start heading uh, northwards on that path there. So this is the path cut walk that we've just come down. Hopefully, I haven't confused you too much there. And this is the Roman bridge, except it's not Roman. Now, there probably would have been a bridge uh, originally built here when Cut Walk was first established. Certainly the present bridge though is made of three inch bricks which is inconsistent with the uh, date of 1725 for Cut Walk. Not 100% sure why it's called Roman but uh, perhaps because it's on a straight looking track? I don't know. But it's one of um, the most photographed bridges perhaps in the New Forest. And it uh, goes over the Highland Water, which of course is an old friend of ours. We've seen this many a time in previous walks on the New Forest. It rises in the Ocknell enclosure up by Stony Cross and then flows six miles to Boulderford Bridge near Brockenhurst where it meets the Ober Water and then becomes the Limington River and flows another seven miles out to sea at Limington. Ah, uh, some cracking fungi there. Right, we're now going to start heading northwards again, back over the uh, the bridge. And we've got this lovely woodland walk back towards Emery Down. Oh, this is quite, quite enchanting, this little bit of path and track. Some, some cracking trees along the route. A mixture really of everything. A few oak, quite a lot of beech. It's so, so, so peaceful. Uh, so far I've only seen one other person out here and it's what, Friday morning? Look at my watch, 11 o'clock. Well, we're not that far from the centre of Lyndhurst really. But 
I suppose it wouldn't surprise me if later on in the summer it becomes a bit more popular but at the moment we've got it to ourselves. Well, Logan's loving it, he's uh, keeping track of all the squirrels, keeping them in order. <laughs> well we've made our way out of the wooded area, it really was quite a delightful walk through there. And we've come out at a, a car park uh, it's a Forestry Commission car park called James Hill and what we're going to do now is just follow the road back into Emery Down and have a little exploration through the village before we end. Uh, just coming into the village, this is the New Forest Inn which dates from the first half of the 19th century. Now Edward Smith, who was captain of the Titanic, spent his final night on British soil at this pub before he set sail on that ill-fated journey the next day. And I believe it has a resident ghost, a woman who regularly draws curtains and takes pictures off the walls. Well there was a chap called Admiral Frederick Boultby who lived in the village between 1856 and 1876 very important chap because he built the church, the school and some almshouses. Now the almshouses are just by me here on the left, built in 1871 for the elderly of the parish. And just by me here on the right is the old school, opened in 1865 and closed in 1950. I think it's private now, but I think I saw it up for sale for one and a half million pounds quite recently. Well normally we tend to look at the church in these villages at the start of the walk. Today it's going to end our walk. Just having a look at behind me here. This is Christ Church. They built in, uh, well between 1863 and 1864 by uh, our friend Admiral Frederick Moore Baltby. And uh, built of local brick with bath stone dressing as you can see it's got a nave, chancel, organ chamber, vestry and northwest porch and a bell coat with a single bell. And you can see the flag there at half mast. As I uh, film it's the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral tomorrow. Oh and just by the church a boundary stone. We do love uh, finding these on our walks don't we Logan? Another one to, to tick off. <laughs> well, I was just thinking to myself, I hadn't come across many ponies or donkeys on this walk today. And here's a couple enjoying the sunshine. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a, a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. Then that way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a beautiful, really peaceful walk today in a lot of woodland primarily, but it has been quite glorious, helped with the sunshine as well. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. You're ready for a snooze now, aren't you? Hey? <laughs>